Hello everyone and welcome to Monday's edition of the Chris Pritchard Cycling News Show. Transition. All right, and before we get into the show today, a little bit of housekeeping. We're about to open a can of worms again that we've not opened for quite a while, so you're going to want to stick around, around for that. I can't wait for the comments once again. Right, first things first, hit that subscription button, hit that notification bell so you know when we drop our videos or we go live with our live streams. Winter is certainly on its way. It's not here today, but it's a coming. So you know that means live streams are going to be happening over the winter. So, so just make sure you've hit that subscription button and that notification bell so you know when we go live with our videos. Also, brand new CPCN Instagram account has launched today. We're doing a small giveaway of a pair of Wahooligan socks. So if you want to be in it with a chance of getting those, head over, follow, do what you need to do with the uh, the giveaway and um, and sit back and enjoy some different CPCN news. We're going to be bringing you slightly different stories. We're going to be doing it in a different way over there. And yeah, it's just a it's just a, another string to our bow to be able to bring you some some quality content, I guess. Right then, let's talk transfer news to begin with. And the biggest news, breaking news right as of recording this is Gabs Collet of Team Wiggins has just signed a 2-year contract with Movie Star. Within the last hour, the 23-year-old has tweeted this out. Over the moon to share the news that I have signed with Movie Star Team for 2020 and 2021. I'm incredibly excited and honoured for this opportunity to be part of a team with such a rich history in the sport. Movie Star also tweeted out that we're delighted to open our 2020 transfer campaign with British talent Gabs Calais, who signed a two-year contract with the Movie Star Team. All right, and sticking with British riders, over the weekend, the boss of Total Direct Energy has been in contact with Dan Martin. There's no agreement in place other than to say that he has admitted to uh, to be talking with Dan Martin. Personally, the quicker Dan Martin can get out of UAE, the the better. I think. I don't think um, that team. I don't think that team's any good. I don't. I've not seen one rider flourish there yet. Every rider that's gone there. As, as, as panned, has died, as, as, as really struggled. So I think if he wants to keep his career going, then the quicker he gets out of that place, the better. And hopefully Total Direct Energy might be the place to do it. It also might be the only place to, to, to be able to do it. And after I've just said that about UAE, Brandon McNulty, he's off to UAE from Team Rally UHC on a three-year contract. Although riders' careers go to die there, they potentially might flourish there if they've if they're still coming through if they've you know they've been signing for a, a pro conti team and they get a chance to go and ride at world tour then then they've got to take it maybe this team will suit him better but I, again i can't help thinking that that uae just 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 don't have what it takes to to be at that level that everyone else seems to be at yeah the less said about that, the better. But yeah, anyway, Brandon McNulty signed a three-year contract with UAE. Let's see how he gets on. Pro please, prove me wrong. Prove me wrong, Brandon. Come on. And the Quick Quickstep have bolstered their roster with two new signings, Stern Steels from the soon-to-be-finished Roompot team and also from Kofidis is Bert van Leerberger. Probably the biggest news coming out of the transfer window, though, is Matteo Trentin signing for CCC. And CCC are a team that, that obviously has GVA, so they're... They're all in on those spring classics. They they really value those spring classics and obviously get a lot of exposure, get a lot of chances to actually win. And with Trentin and GVA in there, that's going to be a tough team to beat. Right, and let's get on to the first main story of the weekend, which was the San Sebastian, a great race in itself, but dominated by one person, one teenager, Remco Evenepoel. This This commentary pretty much summed up what everybody else was thinking. Scoins, attenzione. Oh, 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 Siamo di fronte forza, l'azione decisiva per Renko. Non ci posso credere. Fuori categoria, fuori categoria. Nuovo fenomeno del ciclismo mondiale. Non ci posso credere. Mamma mia, ma che corridore è? Ma che corridore è? Ma che corridore è? Mamma mia, indeed. A 19-year-old teenager barely got his driving license in in some places in america can't drink alcohol legally but can absolutely destroy a peloton of professional athletes just sensational and don't forget this was his first ever one day world tour race that doesn't bode well for the upcoming classic season next year it doesn't bode well for anybody you've so you've got 
Egan Bernal at the Tour de France and the Grand Tours, not boding well for anybody else that wants to ever win a Tour de France. Now you've got Remco Evenepoel, you've got Mathieu van der Poel, you've got Wout van Aert when he gets back, you've got probably Tom Pidcock, Gabs Coulet. You've got riders who are like 27, 28 plus, bricking themselves now. So for anyone who, who didn't see San Sebastian and wants to, to get the lowdown on what actually happened with Remco Evenepoel in this race, Check out this thread of tweets. Remco Avenapol's last hour at Classica San Sebastian. One, dropped from Peloton on the second climb. Two, made a huge effort to get back to Peloton. Three, played role of water bottle carrier. Four, attacked with skins 20 kilometers from the finish. And then if that rider happened to go back and get dropped all the way down the back of the pack, you'd still think great effort, well done, still a teenager. Don't worry about it. There's plenty more chances to, to come. But that's not what happened. Number five, built a 49 second lead maximum with Skins to the Peloton. He then subsequently dropped Skins and went solo with 8.6 kilometers to go. Picture seven, barely lost any time to the chasers during the uber steep 500 meters of the last climb. And finally, kept the time gap unchanged until the finish. All right, here's a question I wanna know from this whole amazing Ramco Avenapol story, right? What were you doing for the first time when you were 19? Because I know, sure as I wasn't winning any World Tour races, I think I'd just learned how to tie my shoelaces and I knew how to set the video recorder up to record Big Break on a Saturday night. I think that, that was about it. But what were you doing when you were 19 for the first time that you thought you were amazing at? I'd love to know in the comments down below. Oh, one more thing about this story as well, and, and let me rub some more salt into the wounds of any of you youngsters who are who are expecting to have a, a career in professional cycling. Remco Evenepoel, five years previous to winning this World Tour race, was scoring goals for the Belgian football team. Is there anything this kid cannot do? All right, and the final story of the day, in fact, wait, and I, I need to get something before we, uh, before we carry on this one. Oh. Sorry about that. Right. So the main story coming out of today and over the weekend was Team Ineos. Oh, this. It's just a can of worms. The biggest story coming out over the weekend is Team Ineos dropped a video of Chris Froome's recovery slash interview with how everything's been going on and it's caused quite the controversy. We thought the whole conspiracy theorists had died down. However, they hadn't. Now, before we open that can of worms, on the conspiracy theorists, which are going mad. Worse than the first time he actually had his accident. This is this is insane. But let's talk about, about the video and what was said. In a tweet from Team Ineos, a seven minute video has been dropped. It's been viewed 220,000 times. And then the tweet says, in his first interview since the crash that ended his 2019 season, Chris Froome reflects on the incident and details his vigorous daily recovery regime, which is helping him move closer to his goal of lining up on the start line for the 2020 Tour de France. I'd set out to go and do a, a route recon before the before the time trial uh, that day, and um, it was a it was a really windy, gusty day. But I, I, I can remember just being excited about the race, looking forward to to testing out my legs ahead of the Tour de France and really showing where I was at form-wise. It, it still hadn't quite sunk in at that, at that point, just how serious it was. As soon as all my injuries were, were actually fully fully explained to me, that was where I obviously full, took on board exactly what the extent of the injuries were and, and understood. I mean, I, 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 could, I, I could barely even breathe after, after surgery. I, my, my lungs had been damaged by my broken ribs and my broken sternum as well. So, I mean, I was coughing up blood. I was having uh, help, to, help to breathe as well. So. And on the whole, the responses on this thread on Twitter from Team Ineos have all been positive. Everybody getting behind through me, everybody supporting through me, and everybody just generally being nice. But we can't have that on the internet. We can't have everybody being nice. So clearly there are these uh, conspiracy theorists who are rehashing this story, uh, trying to dig it all back up and trying to find evidence within this video as to why Team Ineos and Chris Froome are, are lying about it. I've stated my case on this. I, I believe I'm not a Team Ineos fanboy. Don't think I am. But I believe it genuinely happened. Um, that's it. I'm not trying to prove it to you. I'm just saying I believe it genuinely happened. But there's people. And Jesper is one of them who, who believes that this was fate. And, and Jesper pretty much summed this, this whole story up in, in a nutshell with the fact that they've dropped this video. 
whether you believe uh, Chris Froome really crashed, which he did, um, then this video just bolsters your opinion on that. However, if you are a conspiracy theorist, there is enough in there to, to actually think that this was faked. There's enough um, unanswered questions to these people that, that make this clearly, clearly fake. But let's take a look at some of these uh, some of these theories coming out. First and foremost is this tweet. Very touching hearing Froome give a caveat that he has no recollection of the crash, so any inconsistencies are because he's relying on the accounts of others, then proceeding to have total recall, asking Blem if he can get back on the bike, race a toy, etc. Remarkable. And then this dude tweeted this out. What are the chances of two guys called Chris Froome being in the same hospital at the same time, though obviously with different degree of injuries? Do you know what? It, do you know what it amounts to, right? It amounts to people clutching at straws. They see that picture of him in the neck brace, in the bed, and all of a sudden everybody becomes an expert on what a hospital should look like. An intensive care unit shouldn't look like that. It shouldn't have a chair there. It should have doctors in there all the time. It shouldn't have a sticker of a skeleton. They should know what a skeleton looks like. Listen, just shut up. I worked in a hospital once. I've never seen it look like that. I've been in a hospital once and it didn't look like that. I don't care what the hospital looks like. I'm looking at this one, right? Looking at this, I don't know, maybe maybe Team Ineos didn't put this one out straight away because they were unsure of the severity of the the, the accident. They wanted to get the picture, for sure. You wanna, you wanna document what's going on, that's cool. But also, let's be a little bit sensitive to, to Chris, his fans, his family, and, and not put this out straight away. Let's. Let's put another picture out a couple of days afterwards when he when he looks a lot better and he's, he's in a better frame of mind to be able to get a decent picture. And here's another one. Uh, these conspiracy theorists love to um, to remain anonymous during these, these debates and comments. However, if they ever were to prove something, I bet they would change their name. I bet they would let the world know exactly who they are. But check these pictures out that prove absolutely again, nothing. So this is from Froome's Magic Leg original. This is the last thing I'm talking about on this one because I'm, I'm getting annoyed. The right leg is from this year at Vuelta a Catalunya. Left is evidence of his crash in June. Those are the same effing cuts. Again, like I said, you can you can manipulate and twist anything to uh, to suit your narrative. But I'm just countering this. I'm not saying it's legit or not. But have you ever fallen off a bike? What are the main contact points with the ground when you crash a bike? Here, 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 knee. I'm, I'm pointing at my knee, the knee. So it's not surprising to see cuts in the same area, similar shape to other cuts that have gone before on the, on the knee area or the elbow or whatever it might be. I will say, however, that sometimes Team Ineos don't help themselves because they deleted this tweet. In case you missed it, here's another chance to see Chris Froome's first interview since recovering from his crash that ended his season. Like anyone that's involved in social media, especially with, with a company, um, that's not unheard of to one, type something wrong, I've done it before, and two, delete it when you realise it was wrong. Um, I don't really understand what the big deal is, I don't understand what straws they're clutching out there, are they saying that that should have gone out? I don't know, what, I, I don't know. I don't know. What you're saying here is that Team Ineos are covering something up, most likely a ban for, for using illegal substances. The UCI don't want that ban to come out because it'll make the UCI look bad, it'll make everybody look bad, it'll make Ineos look bad. So what we're saying is, instead of having this ban, we'll fake a, an injury and fake a crash so serious that he needs to take six or 12 months off of the bike. So in effect, giving him the ban, but without actually saying he's got the ban. So if that's the case, there, there's someone in the UCI that knows about this. There's someone in WADA that knows about this because at some point that test must have gone through. There's a scientist out there, if this is true, who did that test and knows about it. So go and find that person and get them to talk. Give them a reason to talk. But if you can't, just show up about it, okay? Just shut up about it. All right, and finally, as if this show hasn't been long enough, we're just gonna go into the bear competition. Remember, on Friday, we spoke about naming, unofficially naming the bear of the brand new Zwift Titan Grove Roo. Um, there was a bear in there. Zwift were gonna name it, but we wanted to have our own competition to name it something. Ideally, something crude and rude is what I wanted. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the suggestions that, that you guys came up with. Craft Bear, I like that. Bernard Hino. 
Teddy Bear Mercs. John. Rich Webber went John. By Racing Without Mercy, that's a good one. Grizz Pritchard, the endangered one. Nick Hume comes with a good one. We should call him Scro. Kean's gone for the name Ass, Bear Ass, I like that. Porsche Griffiths, Pantani the Bear. Ruben, I saw a few people going for Egan Bear now as well. All right, I'm not gonna lie. I love you lot, you know I love you, and I'm gonna call it straight. We can do better than that. Let's, let's try it one more time, just give me a few more suggestions. They're a little bit, come on, you know where we need to go with this, do it. All right, thanks for watching everybody. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And don't forget, today is the day we launch our CPCN Instagram account for all those, those other news stories that we don't get to cover as well as teasers as to what's coming during the Chris Pritchard Cycling News Show. Do all that, come back tomorrow, we'll have another video. Until then, 